Hi, my name is Heather and welcome to my new Wix artist website series, where I will be showing you how to create your own artist website from the ground up. I decided to do this in Wix because I really like the platform. This actually isn't sponsored by Wix, unfortunately, but I used to have my website in WordPress, which I love, and I'm a coder, so I really liked being able to add my own custom code and all that, but I kind of got to the point where I just couldn't be as creative as I wanted to be with it. When you're doing stuff in HTML, everything kind of needs to be like in a very gridded layout, or you could use absolute positioning, but you would kind of have to go in and like do that stuff manually. So I was kind of looking through other platforms and I looked at Squarespace, but they kind of have that same like very static grid thing going on. And it really doesn't have a lot of options for customization. And I have a couple clients that use Wix. So when I started to build my website in there, I really liked just how creative I could be and really just kind of figure out the layout as you go and just move things around as you want. And it's just a really fun platform to create your website in. But it can be kind of complicated going in from the beginning. So that's why I wanted to show you from scratch how to create your website. In order to do this from scratch, since my website is already made in Wix, I'm going to be making a new website for my friend Leanne, who's an artist. Leanne Nips, she goes by the name Dark Edge Art, and she has really amazing art that's like dark, but like cute. And it's really cool because it's kind of like the complete opposite of my art, which is like colorful and bright and happy. And hers is like just it's still cute, but it's also like kind of dark. She does have a Wix website, but it's a very simple one. It's all just one page and you just scroll down and there's not really much on it. It's very simple, but I'm gonna show you how to do like a full-fledged website. We'll pull an Instagram, sell products on the website as downloads. We can connect the website to Printful so that we can do print-on-demand products. We'll build a full-fledged portfolio. We're gonna do all these things on the website. So that's why this is gonna be a whole series and not just one video. And by the way, I don't have an affiliate link for Wix yet either, but if I get one, then I'll drop it down in the description. Let's go ahead and start creating the site. When you go into the Wix dashboard, you're going to see create a new site. So I'm going to click on that. And then this is some AI thing I'm just going to set up without AI. For what kind of website are you creating? I'll just pick portfolio. And for the website, I'll call it Dark Edge Art because that's what she goes as. Maybe I'll also put by Leanne Nips. So that way it has her name on it too. And this way, if someone's searching Google, then they can find her from her name or from her business name. I don't really want to add these from the beginning because when I did that the last time, it just like added all this random stuff to the site. And I would rather just kind of start from scratch. So let's just have portfolio picked and then I'll just do next. Let's do go to dashboard. This is for the custom domain, which we can get into later for sure. But for now, I'm just going to go to design site. And we're going to pick the let Wix create a site for you. I'm going to do that because that's going to start from scratch instead of a template. We need a logo here, so I'm going to look at her current website. She doesn't really have a logo, but we can maybe just pick one of her pieces of art and use it as a logo. Actually, I'm going to go to her Instagram page, and she has all this cool art here, and she does a ton of these voodoo dolls. So for now, I'll use that as the logo. If she wants to change it later, she can. I think maybe I'll use this one with the guitar, but since it's just going to be a logo, I wonder if I should just use the head so that it can kind of be like bigger and more prominent. If I include the whole guitar, which I think is adorable, then actually the whole thing will kind of have to be shrunk down. So let's use just the head. I'm just gonna jump into Photoshop really quick here and 
just kind of make this into a logo. Now I'm going to upload the logo and I will enter in her email. I'll add her Instagram link right here. She does have an Etsy account, so I'll go ahead and copy that in. And we can just start with a black theme, I guess, since we probably will use that. And for the homepage design, I'm just going to skip that. We can go ahead and have it add an about and a contact page to the website. And now let's click go to editor. So here is our basic site that we're starting with. And you can see that we have a little navigation menu up here with the pages of the site. And so far we have home, about, contact, and portfolio. And we have our logo here. I usually like to have the logo on the left and have the menu items to the right of the logo just because I feel like it makes a better use of the space. But of course this part's up to you. I'm going to click in here on the header and I'm just going to drag this up here. So you can literally like just drag and drop stuff, which is what's really fun about Wix because you can be really creative with it. But you do have to be careful because if I put it out here, see how that turned gray? You don't want to do that because then these are things that are going outside of the margins. When your site loads in the web browser, depending on the size of the web browser, it's going to look different. So if someone has a really small screen, then these margins here are going to get cut off. So these margins here are just kind of extra space and you don't want to put anything in that space that you need it to show up on your website and you need people to see it. Like you can have color there or pattern, but that's all I would have there. So I'm going to have my menu here. I think I'm going to have it aligned to the right. So I'm going to not have these items centered in here because these could change depending on browser size. So I want them to be actually aligned to the right. I'm going to go to layout. Here is the menu layout and there is text alignment and item alignment. So text alignment is like within the button or the like area for the text for the link. Do you want the text to be aligned to the right or like centered or aligned to left? So I'm going to keep that as centered. But for item alignment, I want it to be right. And then that's going to shift all those buttons over to the right. Then I'm just going to close that. And I'm going to put the logo over here. Now I'm going to pick out some main styles for the site. So I'm going to go over to site design. This is where I can change all my colors and my fonts and all that. So I'll go to color theme first and let's do for our base color, maybe like a gray. I feel like that will go with her art pretty well. This is our second color. So it's like an accent color. So we have the text in that color and some other elements. I might just keep that as black, but we can also add some accent colors. So she does have some red in some of her designs here, so we might want to use that. There's some nice blue. She also does a lot of frogs, so the green. So I think like her main color scheme is grayscale, but then she does just kind of have a variety of other colors. So let's add some accent colors here. I'll do some red. Adding it here just makes it easier to pick later because then when we're adding like a title or something, we don't have to keep trying to find the right red. We just pick this red and that's the right red. I'll do some of that bright blue and some green. And we may even end up changing this later. Sometimes you don't really know until you start designing stuff, but this will be good for now. Now I'm going to go back and now we can do our text. So let's click on the heading and let's try to find a good font. So the font that she had here is this kind of typewriter font. So maybe we'll go with that, but let's also just kind of look through here and see if there's anything we like better. Oh, I do also kind of like this for her, but I want to see what her text actually looks like as that font. So I'm going to click on this and do edit text and let's make it heading one. And I'm going to make this say dark edge art because now I can really see like, does this fit the theme of dark edge art? And maybe I'll drop in 
one of her pieces of art here as well, because then we'll really get a good idea. I'm not quite sure about that font now, so let's go back to site design and I'll click on the text theme again and click on heading one. And now let's see if there's a better font here. She does do a lot of pen and ink, so I do think something that's kind of more rough looking would be good. I don't really see anything that I love here, so let's go to Google Fonts. That's always where I like to go first to pick out a font because these are all just free to use. You can use them for commercial use. You don't have to worry about any rights or anything like that. I want to look for some handwriting fonts because those are the kind that I like the best. For our preview, I'm going to type in Dark Edge Art by Leanne Nips. And let's go ahead and scroll down and see if any of this looks like it fits Leanne. This one kind of does. So I'm going to just command to click on that so it opens in a new tab. I like this one because it looks really rough. Ooh, this one looks really cool. The only thing I don't really like about this one is that it doesn't have lowercase letters, but if we're just using it for the titles, then it should be okay. I think I'm going to go with this one because it really looks like it goes with her art and it just looks so like edgy. I love it. So up here, I'm just going to click download family and then I'm going to find my zip file and I will double click to open it. And in here is the TTF file and that's the font file. So now I'm going to go to Wix and in this text part here, I'm going to click on heading one and I'm going to click on the font list. And down here, I'm going to do upload fonts. Now here I can click upload fonts and I'm going to find that TTF file and I'm going to click open. And then I'll click done. And then in here, now I can pick that font all the way up at the top. It's right here, rock salt. Maybe I'll need to make this a little smaller and click apply. Now let's just X this out. We're going to end up changing this text anyways, but I do want the name of the site up here. So let's click into the header and then we're going to click add elements. So I'm going to click this plus sign and I'm going to add text, theme text, and I'm going to do add heading one. So that'll be our special font that we just uploaded. Also, the fact that we're using heading one instead of just adding regular text and just changing what it looks like, this is very important because if it's actually heading one, then it uses the H1 heading HTML tag and it tells Google and other search engines that this is very important text on the page. So this is the most important text, and that's why it's a heading one. And we're doing dark edge art here. And that's telling Google that like the main thing about this page is dark edge art. So if someone were to search for dark edge art, then this page will come up. So that's very important. You want to make sure that you use your headings appropriately. And we do have the text being cut off a little bit here. So I'm going to fix that by going down to character and line spacing. If we click automatic, then that fixes it. So now it's not getting cut off. And then I can just line this up there. And that looks really good. And then for the menu, I can also change that font as well. So I'm going to go to design. And you can pick different themed menus here, but I'm just going to do customize design and I'm going to go to text and I'm going to change the font to rock salt. And that's perfect. This is all I'm going to do for now because this tutorial is going to get really long if I do more, but stay tuned for the next video where we'll finish up doing the branding. And then of course, we're going to do all kinds of cool stuff in the videos to come. I hope you had fun watching this video. If you're working on your own website, drop it in the comments below. Join my creativity club on Facebook and we can all share our websites there and give each other feedback. And let me know if you have certain plans for your website that you want me to show you how to do. Like, do you plan on doing print on demand on your website, connecting it to social media accounts? What kind of special things do you have planned for your site? 
let me know below and I will probably add it into an upcoming video. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.